Hey, and welcome back to the Screen Team. I'm Sabrina, and uh, Chris has handed over the reins to me, to Laura Butler, and to Toby Spencer. Oh, he didn't know what he opened up there, does he? Yeah, <laughs> big can of worms. <laughs> Some delicious, juicy ab. Domino worms. Mm, <laughs> yes, in, lo- in a loincloth. In a loincloth. <laughs> worms with, abdomo- with abdominals and a loincloth. That's a heck There's of a There's only one worms. movie we can be talking about. We are talking about Tarzan. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We had a great girls' night with this. We yes, did. And, it and, and it could be a family movie, granted, but it's a good girls' movie. It was fun. I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to totally take the not girls' night out version. Okay, and I'm going with um, this is a fun movie that any member of the family could enjoy, and and probably as young as even Luke would find this movie fascinating, especially with the animals, yes. with all of the mm-hmm. animals and all of the animal uh, calls and uh-huh. stuff that Tarzan can do, and um, I mean, he's not going to get some of the adult stuff con content and Mm -hmm. concepts uh but there's nothing going on in this movie that he couldn't see oh sure so that's important to say and then and then there's some amazing scenery and visualization for africa and Mm -hmm. and and the conga and all of this stuff and then um you know, I grew up watching the old Tarzan movies. You know, Tarzan and Jane and Johnny and, Weissmuller. Yeah, the original and one and only, I in my opinion. <laughs> um, I mean, I can remember on Saturdays. You know, you had three channels to choose mm-hmm. from. One of them had three movies in a row every Saturday and every Sunday, uh-huh. and they usually were related. So it was like three Tarzan movies in a row. Mm-hmm. And my mom and I would watch that stuff. Oh, sure. And I was just like, oh, and we would practice doing yeah. the oh, yeah. call. You know, uh-huh. <laughs> so it wasn't your Disney cartoon version. Uh-huh. This was. It was like they were hunting the animals and the white man would come and, and, you know, and just, you know, everything that you imagine is going to happen happens Mm -hmm. in this movie. It does. And it's awesome because it does. And it's comfortable. I mean, it it was not exactly the storyline I was expecting, and I'm not telling you what exactly I expected. I guess it's more of a backstory. But I like the way they started it in Victorian England, and you're seeing, you know, kind of, the Carson, Lord Greystoke, Lord Greystoke, and seeing him as a, as a civilized person instead of the savage that we're that used he grew to see. Up to be. That he, you know, was speaking, you know, not just me, Tarzan, you, Jane. It was, you know, clear English, and it was a very educated man. And yeah. I think that stuck more to the novel, right? And, and yet, you see his hands curled in permanent fixture mm-hmm. of being the man that walked on his hands the wrong way, right? right. I mean, you see these, and they've done a good job of hinting and drawing your attention to certain things. And he does a fantastic job as a Tarzan, Yes, in my opinion. I thought he was a perfect casting. Yeah. Even though I still have to say I see him from True Blood. He's Eric Northman, and he'll always be Eric Northman to me. That's where I discovered him. He's always going to be the sheriff, as far as, yeah, Yeah. exactly. I mean, just because he's got the same gaze, the smolder is the smolder is Mm -hmm. the smolder, Mm -hmm. and he's got one look. Mm-hmm. So until they cut his hair and put him in some other, you know, other than, you know, let me show you my abs, uh-huh. um, he's always going to be that person, that character. Even though it's Tarzan, he's still an animal. Well, that's what I liked about the way that they started him in England. I mm-hmm. think that especially for a girl's night, for that purpose, <laughs> it was neater to see him go from gentleman the gentleman, the gentleman to, the, to beast, the animal yes from then the because i mean otherwise if you're in a girl's night from seeing him go from the beast to the gentleman it's kind of like wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but this was but this way you realize yeah, he's not point. been tamed right exactly it's true I and mean, i love the love story between he and absolutely. jane that's i what love I that part of it the romance and the passion that those two had together now the faith she had in him yes, yes. it was absolute love yes. between the mm-hmm. two of them and one thing i will say here this is where the road takes a different turn for me jane okay this jane is right out of the disney movie yes to me yeah i can see that not the jane the helpless jane not the jane that we see in the original tarzan Mm -hmm. movie right right okay um even though they do in the original movies they show jane you know and him Mm -hmm. having a little plain house out in the middle of nowhere and Uh in their little up in a tree house yeah up in a tree house and uh it's not the same as what she portrays this as right. this current version and this is in the late 1800s so mm-hmm. you know i think that and if also did you notice the audience that we were seeing the movie with there was a lot of different ages a lot there. of age groups but a majority of them i thought felt like they were 50 and up yeah they were older mm-hmm. and 
they were having couples night. You can tell right. they were they were like reminisce. I'm pretty sure that these are the folks who went and saw the original Tarzan movies right. when they went out dating and courting and all that kind of stuff. You know, and I think that's so cool that yeah. they came to see this Tarzan movie exactly. together. Because I personally, the younger generation, maybe in their late teens and twenties, the only Tarzan they're familiar with is the Disney. Tarzan, True. George of the Jungle, George of the Jungle, and stuff. They're, they they're not real familiar <laughs> with the old, <laughs> with the old black and white Johnny Weissmuller, Ron Eli. I think was the other Tarzan in the sixties. They're not familiar with that storyline as well as what right. my generation is. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> and uh, but I I like the way it was all pulled together. And like you said, visually it was a beautiful movie. I expected to get a lot of cinematography awards. Just, I just for I, the visuals. I'm awful at picking that stuff, mm-hmm. but I, I agree. I thought it was very beautiful. Mm-hmm. It was set, fa- you know, they had the camera work far enough away from the actors a lot of times where you could see and take mm-hmm. in yes. the beauty of of the, the Pride Lands and the, right. you know, and then the jungle was just mystical and, and the scenes between the animals, even though they're all CG, CGI for the most part, you just, man, it's so good It was so not good obvious, now. though. It was not obvious. It is obvious. so good now. You fall in love by looking at their eyes. Just mm-hmm. like the herd of elephants walking through, and you just have these moments where you're just watching them eyeball the camera. Mm-hmm. The most touching part to the whole, in all of it to me was when he comes home, and the lionesses meet him on the top, the crest of yes. the hill. Yeah. That was just like, oh. And there Aww. he is. It's like he was, He's that not- was, at that point, he was... Home again. Yeah, he was mm-hmm. nuzzling them, and yes. and they were, they were practically friends. rolling around. They'd known each other since they were cubs. Yeah, yeah. and um, the the conflict between him and his brother ape, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that fight that they have to have, mm-hmm. and then at the end, you he seems smack him like he always did when they were little. Yeah, you know? that brotherly. Ooh. Yeah, get up, mm-hmm. but acting yeah. like a sissy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the and the I don't know. There's just so much in this movie. And then the storyline, um, I mean, I know i got to wrap this up, but the storyline is based on he's been invited to see the king, the king of uh, Belgium, Belgium, and they've they've split the African lands up between these two empires that want to mm-hmm. control it. One has discovered the diamond empire that's hidden below ground and underneath the tri- the, the underneath the foot of a tribe mm-hmm. that also hates Tarzan. And they find this out and they say, you can have all the diamonds, bring us Tarzan Mm -hmm. so we can kill him. Right. And so the whole movie is them trying to get Tarzan to this tribe Mm -hmm. and Tarzan trying to stop this king from exploiting the people of all the tribes. Right. Enslaving them just for the diamonds and to be able to build up his army empire. And so you get to take this journey back to the... Um, places where he grew up and meet the members of his extended family. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's pretty amazing. The whole thing. really good. And Samuel L. Jackson is the comic relief, basically. He was amazing. (laughs) And it was in a character that I didn't expect him to play. Mm -mm. But he plays himself. It's just, it works for some strange reason Mm -hmm. to me. He plays the same Samuel L. Jackson, only he doesn't get to cuss in this one. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's thing. That was like, my next thing. thing. Not, not, cuss not one cuss, not word. cuss word. In this You've seen his eyes yeah. at times, but he didn't say it. Yeah. He didn't but, say it. But you get the same Samuel L. Jackson. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But he's just in different clothes, and he's got a real touching story. Yeah. He does. Underlying all of this, too. And he, he's a good guy. It, it wasn't works. always a good guy. Right. But he's, yeah. but he's trying to redeem himself. He's trying to redeem himself. So the whole thing happens... In Africa, for the most part, you got a few uh, opening scenes and reminder scenes that happen here mm-hmm. and there back in England. But for the most part, it's all there. And, and what you've seen in the trailers doesn't give you the movie. And well, that's nice. Know. And I was afraid of that. I really was. Because a lot of times we see the best parts in the trailers. Happens but too no, often. But no, this visually, uh, like I said, maybe the acting, the actors basically played themselves in with those familiar. character lines. Familiar they, characters. They were in familiar skins. But it worked. But it worked. It worked. So we loved it. Right? Yes. yes. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay. I'd see it again. Um, I'm curious to see how the men folk feel about this movie. Mm-hmm. We'll find out. Maybe we'll get some guys to uh, chime in on our comment section. Check us out online at Facebook or our screenteampv.com. You can also um, hit us up if you've got movies you want to review. Reach out to us. We'll bring you on to the team for a day and make you a star. So uh, <laughs> we are always looking for volunteers who want to go see a movie and tell us all about it. And uh, speaking of movies, coming up next week, we've got the Ghostbusters, the girl version, 
the A-Team, and Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So got some new, some old, and some, whoa, I can't believe they read me that. <laughs> All right, um, that's next week's show. Thanks for tuning in on behalf of Toby, Toby Spencer, Laura Butler, and myself, Sabrina J. We are all excited to have you here and reviewing movies so that you know before you go. Check out our sponsors, Whitworth's Gift Chest Jewelers, where Walmart is next door to them, Fearless Social, and our friends at PB Drywall. Thanks for joining us in. You're listening to KWOC, The Screen Team.